throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights. I am your host, Dear James. My incredibly fabulous co-host, the Lady Jacqueline, is off this week. So thank you one and all for joining us. Um, It is an action-packed week of energies and really more so the culminating of them, the the expanding of them and so forth. So we're going to jump in. I'm going to give you the who, what, why, how of it all. Um, As you're joining us live each and every week, please uh, put in the comments that you're joining us. Um, Give us a shout out so that we know where you're calling from, where you're calling from. Ha! See, there's going to be calls. So where you are joining us from, and that way we know. And throughout the broadcast, by all means, as the information is being shared and everything, um, place in the comments if you have a question, if you just want to share a comment about it, or how it's impacting you. And throughout the broadcast, we'll incorporate those um, into the show and take your questions live. So again, remember, if you would like intuitive insight, on a question or something that you're facing or a challenge, put it in the comments and we will address it throughout the show. Um, As always, it's me and the unseen. Um, Dear James, I'm an intuitive. So I will take your questions and answer them from an intuitive space, listening to the unseen, spirit, source, and symphony. So welcome. Let's jump in. It's really, this has been a a really extraordinary week. because I knew the theme a couple of days ago, and it was building. I don't usually do that. I usually sit down the morning before, or the morning of, pardon me, and I just listen and I download. I look at the numbers, as you all know. We look at everything from numerology to the hexagrams of the I Ching to astrology and, of course, the unseen. And when the Lady Jacqueline is with us, uh, the human design elements. And so this one was a little different. This one was the the title, the theme came in ahead of time. And yesterday it was really, and I knew, I was like, God, this is really big, bigger. And I was sitting with it, grappling, grappling with it. I was working with a, a fellow colleague um, and light worker discussing it and everything most of yesterday. Um, and so let me just jump into it. We're going to do the the current energies here. So it's going to be what's happening. And remember, these energies aren't just this week. So whenever you find all of these shows, when you find this video and or this podcast, you'll, it'll be on time for you. It is the current energies. And yet it also holds truth. It holds longevity with it. It is the energy. And these are the energies of the return of the divine feminine 2022 and beyond. So we're moving through these and they've been building and building and building and telling a story. And should you have looked at the, at my Facebook and and Instagram, LinkedIn, there was a post that I just did about the master weaver. And this plays into this whole piece about, and we've talked about in the shows, right? We've talked about how we are the guest and that the master weaver is the host. And we are the co-creators. We're we're co-creating along with the divine. So, and when we look at the at the numbers, we're going to start there with the numbers. It's August, so it's an 8. It's the 17th. So it's a 17, but it's also the 1 and a 7 become an 8. So we have double 8s. 2022, so 22. And the 2022 becomes a 6. And when you add up 8, 17, 20, 22, it becomes a 22. So we have double 22s, which is 44, double 22s, and we have double 8s. Very, very, very powerful numbers. And you can see 4 times 22, 88. So the four element presenting itself, that this is very foundational, fundamental. These are the energies that are playing. And so, right, and right off the bat, that's what was triggering me, was this t- double 22s, the 88, 
Um, and so I listened and I heard the theme and the overall theme, the what of these energies is rainbow blessings. So they said rainbow blessings, a river runs through it. And I want to give you the visual of that. <laughs> so here in this image, you can see this beautiful double rainbow, this doubling of things, double eights, double 22s. You have this beautiful double rainbow, literally where the base of the, of the, the central piece of the rainbow and this river running through it, this river of life, waters you know, the waters of life. And so this image epitomizes what we're talking about because it's the what. The what that is on offer is rainbow blessings, a river runs through it. And the other thing that kept coming up was when I kept seeing the 88, the 88 and the 22, all of these 88 started popping up. And the 88 either associated so it was in an article or something and the each article when it kept popping up it was either talking about the ending of something or the beginning of something and that i took notice of i'm like ah okay there's something here about endings and beginnings the 88 the rainbow blessings a river runs through it and in essence the deliverance of these blessings, these long awaited. And remember, the rainbow is the symbol. It's all the way back to the time of Noah, the ark. The waters have receded and the ark is safe, secure. And three elements came out. The dove, the olive, the olive branch, and a rainbow. And God, source, says to Noah, I've placed this rainbow, my rainbow, in the heavens, in the skies, as my covenant to you, my agreement to you, that I will never again wash the planet of humanity, of humankind. And so here we have, so the, the rainbow is intimately <laughs> connected, associated with God, source, however you'd like to see the higher power the covenant, the agreement. And we're talking about rainbow blessings. A river runs through it. The waters of life. And then, and the how, the how of this. And welcome, Alicia. Thank you for joining. Again, if you're joining us, put in the comments where you're joining from um, and that you're joining. And if you have any questions as we're going through or you want a specific question for yourself, place it in the comments. So, the how of this, so the what is the rainbow blessings? A river runs through it. And the river, the water, the water of life represents the Holy Spirit. So then they came to this and they said, okay, so the how is hexagram 40. It's about deliverance. It's deliverance of divine blessings. And, and that's culminated and it combines with B, the Holy Spirit, baptism of fire, and, and, it's, uh, and Pentecost. Pentecost, it's 50 days um, after Easter. The day floats, so it's a movable feast. That's what's so cool about this. I mean, think about the divine. Think about your lives, our lives. And that really what's on offer is this movable feast. Um, and so the how the how of the what, the rainbow blessings, is that it's going to be delivered. It's a deliverance of divine, bless, uh, of divine blessings, pardon me, via the Holy Spirit, baptism by fire, Pentecost. So when they were at Pentecost, they were all gathered. And when you read about it, it will say to you that the Holy Spirit descended upon them and that there were, and when you see the depictions, you'll see this flame above their heads. And they were, quote unquote, illumined by the Holy Spirit. And they then had this baptism of fire, 
because the, the, the living waters is the Holy Spirit. It's the energy that comes from source. The Holy Spirit is the messenger, the deliverer of that. And so I was really sitting here, and, and we talked about this. You know, we've talked about this in some previous shows. And this is ever more um, imminent, present. And when you look at hexagram 40, it's, it talks about its, it's uh, hidden influence is about after completion, renewal. And we've been talking about going back to where we began, but an octave higher. And I'm going to come to that in a minute. Because <laughs> I was literally just this morning when it all fell, fell into place, so to speak. Woven, the master weaver, intricately laid it together. I literally, I, I called my fellow colleague this morning quickly and I said, can you believe this? I mean, this is incredible how what we were speaking about yesterday, what they've been giving us, and then this morning, and it just wove together beautifully. So the point here is with this, the 22, double 22s, which make a 44, double eights, 88, and this amplifying of this, and then the deliverance of it, the, the what, or the, I'm sorry, the how is the deliverance of it. The deliverance of this, these divine, uh, divine blessings, these rainbow blessings. And Pentecost was exactly that. And just for everybody, the references may be um, from a Christianity, from a, a Christian perspective. It is not a religious aspect that I'm speaking to. This is the whole of the whole. This is for everyone. It is simply the reference they're giving me to explain the energies that are going to be occurring, that are going to be coming to life, so to speak. Um, and the example of it is Pentecost. It occurred before. And at that moment, and it'll say that there's, you know, there are people, you know, fellow theologians, historians, they all try to explain the occurrence, the interpretation. Oh, is it just that they, because it was all of these people gathered from all, because remember, people came from all across the lands for Pentecost. And so they're saying, oh, well, was that just the multitude of um, multiple tongues, meaning multiple languages? Or was this, you know, kind of the cacophony of that? And no. <laughs> this is about the energy of the divine descending and delivering. And you see it, right? It's in all the depictions. You see Master Jesus being baptized in, in the River Jordan, what descends, what's above in the, in the imagery, the Holy Spirit, the dove, the representation of the Holy Spirit, the dove. So you see, we have all of these examples in our known history of this occurrence. We just, quote unquote, haven't had something like this happen in obviously 2,000 plus years. Okay, fair enough. However, doesn't mean it won't happen again. And that's what they're talking about. And the who of this, the who is the master weaver. The who is, it's hexagram 17, because today is the 17, right? So we've got 17, follow. It's about following, follow, be led. Its hidden influence is development, to flower, to bloom, to blossom. And we've we have got, and what's its underlying cause? Decay, remedy, repairing what's spoiled. So you can see these themes, these master themes about deliverance, about follow, be led, follow the master weaver. Soul source connection, go as guided. <laughs> and that we surrender the ego, we surrender so as to purify, so as to harmonize, so as to, so as to receive. And because contained within them is development, flowering, blossoming, renewal. Why? Because we're gonna arrest, we're gonna arrest decay. We're gonna, we're gonna let the sediment fall away, fall out. So that goes away. And 
I want to come into hexagram 17 and talk about talk about this whole piece and and I, before I do that I, and I'm going to bring up a quote this quote is from hexagram 8 and it has to do with the master weaver I mean you can't make this up if you tried it's this piece about says we sleep but the loom of life never stops and the pattern which was weaving when the sun went down is weaving when it comes up tomorrow and that demonstrates so here it's eight right we got double eights it's talking about the master weaver the looming the weaving of life the host that in essence it's eternal it's continual it's omni everything and so the pattern of the weaving never stops as it was when the sun goes down so is it as the sun rises meaning the continuum of it and so as we come into hexagram 17 following be led it's where there is enthusiasm there is sure to be a following and remember enthusiasm was the key point just maybe two shows ago three shows ago it was all about the enthusiasm are we operating with enthusiasm are we creating it are we simply and literally you can do that in, in just in the moment if you're having a bad moment bad word off energy the fastest way to rebound to renew is enthusiasm enthusiasm can be a walk in nature it can be the best song you know one of your favorite songs it can be a walk whatever it may be that creates enthusiasm so here it's saying where there is enthusiasm there is sure to be a following observing nature as your role model you can begin to lead others by emulating its ways the sage who had, had become a master of the self and the pathway was encouraged to develop harmony in one's larger relationship to life transcending your personal journey you are called to lead others as a pathway to growth so see where this the surrender of it the following we're surrendering our personal journeys yes we're having them absolutely however it's not about i i i i'm doing it i'm creating it i'm going this way i'm well now you're you're overriding you're overriding the host <laughs> versus saying hmm, okay let me suspend that let me surrender that let me connect to my soul source connection let me transcend my personal journey it will still be your personal journey however it's going to be at a higher octave because now you're in the receiving of it you're in you're receiving your soul your highest your soul source guidance and so it's going to take you on a completely it may be synergistic however it will always be it's going to be more expanded it's going to be higher deeper wider um, it can be more terrifying I walk the talk um, because of the quote-unquote the unknown and yet what's known is you know to do it you know to go as as guided to go as to follow and so transcending this and that means that it, it creates a pathway because of course what by demonstration people see us right they see what we're doing i have people all the time dear friends say to me i don't know how you do it i don't i couldn't do what you're doing and i always think in my head yes you could and yes you can and yes you will because i know their heart is the same they want the same things they want the same depth of everything and so they will it's just part of it so we go on and this says the master said if you are a model to the empire then the constant virtue will not be wanting to benefit others without extracting gratitude and to steward without ex exercising authority is virtue and so again see built into this is it's not about me it's not about our personal journey it's not about ego mind personality it's about the surrender the receiving from the divine rainbow blessings a river runs through it so as 
and, and without extracting, it's not a quid pro quo, right? It's not a, I'll do this if you do that for me, or I'm doing this so that you'll do something for me. And it's not, and it's stewarding without exercising authority, which means no control, hands off the wheel. I'm not here to control others. That's virtue, right? So these things are culminating, they're coming together. And it talks about your object of inquiry may require that you take the initiative so that others believe in what you are doing enough to follow your lead. So in other words, walk the talk, be the example, Ref, uh, mirror your reflection, mirror it to out, mirror it out solely from the place of being, not for show, not for, you know, again, not for accolade, not for all of this, but simply as a demonstration. I am. Walk the talk. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome from France joining us. Um, it says, the arousing thunder rests within the middle of the joyous lake, representing a calm withdrawal and the image of delegation. When winter gave way to spring, the electricity of the lightning was believed to withdraw into the earth to regenerate the unseen seeds below. So they're talking about, so, you know, we have these amazing thunder and lightning storms and everything, and then they tend to disappear during winter. They go within to germinate the seeds, to empower, to nourish. In the image of withdrawal and retreat, it is time to cultivate the unseen talents of those that follow. Empowering those you lead, you can nurture each individual to build the strength of the group. Sue, S-U-I, Sue is the image of how footsteps naturally follow each other. So we're talking about leading by example. We're talking about following, be led, going as guided, so as to flower, so as to develop, so as to remedy decay, so as to repair what's spoiled, so as to set an example, so as to be the example, so that it inspires others. And it's not, again, it's not about to lead so that you gain a following and, you know, again, cult mind and, you know, ego mind and all this. No, 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 no. It's the purity. It's the innocence of it. It's the simplicity, the goodness of it. It's just, it is I am. It's just that simple. Sensing the appropriate time when things are in their proper place, you may leave what you have built in the hands of those that follow. Desiring to lead the people one must, in one's person, follow behind them. One takes the place ahead of the people, yet causes no obstruction. So again, see the purity of this? Like, and here it is, it's coming in. They're, it's like they're giving me the divine, the, you know, the rainbow blessings, the river that runs through it. We don't dam the river. We don't block it up. We don't bottle it and keep it for ourselves. It flows through us. We do not obstruct it. That's the one thing about water, right? Even in a dam, it, over, it, it overspills the top. There's a beauty, there's a force about the river of life, the water, the living waters that permeates, that flows. It makes its way regardless. It knows how. And this is where it's saying when we, when we seek to lead or when we are living by example, be mindful to not obstruct others. Or as you set the example, as you shine with the purity of your heart, with the purity of your intention, do not obstruct others. Inspire, encourage, bring out the best in them. Because what happens? When we do that, it amplifies, right? And this is a big, you're going to see how the word amplify, amplification is coming. We amplify. Everybody is raised to a higher octave, to a higher state of being, of fulfillment, of, of blossoming, developing. But if we're the leader that keeps people down, you know, fear, oh, I've got to stay the leader, I've got to be the leader, and thereby I'm going to put you down, I'm going to hold you in place, you're obstructing, you're diminishing, and you're doing so because of fear, you're afraid. The emperor has no clothes or some, you know, something or you'll take my place or my position. Well, no, because there's only one of each of us. There's only one divine you. And what's meant, what's, your, what's yours is yours. 
So lead by example, lead by the openness and the fullness of that truth. Um, they're, so they're talking about one takes the place ahead of the people yet causes no obstruction. That is why the empire supports the leader joyfully and never tires of doing so. See, that's when, when, when you know that you have a leader. So in business, and remember, this is in our personal lives, our, our familial relationships. It spreads out to our, our work environments, to our governments, to our institutions, to the whole of the whole. When you cause no obstruction, when you inspire, it's when the empire supports you, supports your business, supports your leadership, your governance, joyfully, and never tires of doing so. Because the energy embodied in it, the energy within it, is one where everybody blossoms, everybody blooms, everybody develops. You raise the entire tribe, the entire pond. Um, firm like a mountain, you can inspire and not impede. Gentle like the wind, you can bring projects to completion by trusting others to carry forward your vision or a shared vision because you're collaborating, you're coming together. So I've got Elizabeth um, joining and saying, she's literally saying you were talking about pausing and that's exactly what's happened here. You paused. Yes, the deliverance. See, the, this is powerful information. And I mean that from a great place of humility. It's not, I'm just the messenger I listen, has nothing to do with me. This is on high speaking here. Um, and there's a beauty in that. There, this is why it's amplified. Um, Elizabeth also mentioned, I love the rainbow, dove, and olive branch imagery. I thought of Dancing Queen. I absolutely love that song. <laughs> the way I felt when I was young, a sense of wonder. Exactly. There are certain songs that are iconic that just really invoke um, enthusiasm and inspiration, and they create an energy that is contagious in the most positive, beautiful, expansive way. That's what we're talking about here. And to apply that, that same enthusiasm, that same... Um, opportunity you know it's it's that the same rainbow blessings to share that with others and to not be afraid we don't need to be afraid about someone you know being underhanded and you know shadow shady and shadowy and all that because that's them they're doing it and they may think in the moment that they have done something Receive something, taken something, you know, as I, God bless, have that experience. Because again, there's only one divine you. And you will go out and, and create and operate in a way that is full, that is amplified. And thereby, you can look at the two and go, wow, this one just has a different energy to it. This one ha this one's speaking to me. This one's saying something to me. Yes, this one's here. It appears to be the same. And yet it's not. Why? Because the the intention and the energy is based in lack, fear, contraction. The other one is not. And so they speak the energies speak for themselves. As a leader, you may operate from insecurity, threatened by the strength of others. Or you can cultivate the talents of those that follow in a way that you are lifted to a higher level. Only by delegating can you be made stronger. See, this is the thing. You're a boss, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a supervisor, you're a manager, you're a head of state. Are you inspiring the people that work with you? Quote unquote, we say, oh, they work for us. Ah, okay. However, in reality, they are working with us and you are either inspiring so as to be lifted higher yourself. And because that's done in such a pure and authentic and non-threatening, non-obstructed way, 
people bring themselves even higher because they're encouraged, they're inspired, they have enthusiasm to do it. And that, of course, delivers ever greater experiences, results, amplification. The empire or enterprise will only support the leader who nurtures others in this way. And this is so true. I mean, you can lead by fear and intimidation and threat and, you know, all this stuff. And at some point, people just go, no more. No more. Some force comes in to wipe it clean, undermine it. Because it's its own, it's its own undoing. And they're saying, so you can take your place ahead without causing any obstruction behind. God, that's powerful, right? You can take your place ahead without causing any obstruction behind. To lead in a way that allow, uh, uh, pardon me, to lead in a way that others follow joyfully is the sign of true leadership. When the task is finished and the work done, the people all say it happened to us or for us naturally. A leader guided by the laws of nature will not be worn down by failing to rely on the strengths of others. See, this is where that beautiful piece of surrender and humility and grace is so empowering. And so, and and why are they talking about this? Why are they talking about to lead and how to lead in this, you know, the hexagram 17, follow, be led. And here's the master weaver giving us the information saying, here you go. Well, because these rainbow blessings are going to be delivered. They are going to naturally elevate us. Now, with that comes, and you'll see, it's it's the next piece to this, the why. We've got the what, we've got the how, the why. Because there's going to be, the why is because there's going to be what they said was an amplification of natural order. An amplification of natural order. And then they gave, it was a colon, and then they, the word within, meaning the whole of the whole is going to have this amplification, this raising up. By default, that amplification of natural order will happen within. And again, remember, there are two camps, right? We keep talking about two worlds, two camps. The way, two different ways. The way and and the old way. The arc of destiny bends forward. It's moving forward. And so this amplification of natural order and then within. And so they're wanting us to realize this is the way. This is the natural order of things. It is to lead without obstructing. It is to lead by example. It is to lead where everyone is lifted up, where everyone's um, what's uh, traits, you know, your your the your divinity shines, and no one is you're not threatened by it, you're inspired by it, you're encouraged by it. Why? Because when we do this with each other, with ourselves, and with each other, the energy of that amplifies magnifies, and the whole of the whole wins. Everybody wins. You're collaborating in the most positive, beautiful way as opposed to competing. Competition, you know, it's been a part of us, right? Competition. And there's nothing wrong with healthy competition when you're literally bringing the best out in each other. You Recently in the U.S., there was an example of You know, a line drive, it was uh, not major league, but baseball, um, minor league for kids and so forth. Line drive smacks the, the, I believe, the pitcher or one of the other players in the head. The person that hit the, the player that, you know, swung and hit the ball immediately went over to the opposing team's player that was hit. Are you okay? Consoled. He wasn't worried about 
running the bases and getting the run and, and scoring. He was concerned about the well-being of the opposing team member. That's what we're talking about. Because again, in that sense, yes, we're having a wonderful game of, of baseball. Yes, we're competing. And yet, the beauty of that experience is heightened when it's really recognized as a grand collaboration. Multiple people coming together to have this experience and wanting the best for one another, no matter the outcome. Because the experience that you walk away with when that is present, like there's just a camaraderie, there's an excitement, an enthusiasm, an opportunity. Well, the experience of whether you, whether you won or lost, whether you're the team that ran the most, you know, brought in the most runs and everything, what stays with you is the experience, the overall experience of that. Notice in the articles, it doesn't talk about who won. It talks about the humility and the empathy and the, the compassion, the camaraderie, the care. That's what made the news. That's what people remember from the experience. So this is why, this amplification. This is the why. And they talked about natural order. And I want to go back to, I'm going to bring you a piece because I wanted to talk about this. Ah, and before I do, sorry. So we got these eights, right? Double eights, double 22s, which becomes 44. And so hexagram eight is about uniting. This is what they're talking about. Right? We're going to be, the amplification of natural order is going to bring about organic, natural unity, oneness, wholeness with ourselves and with each other. And you'll see how that, that plays in a second about natural law, natural order, pardon me. And contained within uniting, unite, coming together. The hidden influence, 23, splitting apart. We've been talking about splitting apart. Two camps, the sediment, these things that are going to be extracted from us, the splitting apart, the letting go of things that have been holding us down, back, thoughts, people, things, places, energies, splitting apart so as to regenerate. And the underlining cause is hexagram 14, great possessing, so as to shine, illumine, baptism by fire, <laughs> Holy Spirit. This energy that's permeating, remember this force, the Divine Mother, this force. And they said it's not genie in a bottle. You don't, you don't box it up and package it and try to contain it and sell it and hoard it. And, no, 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 no. You do that, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> You allow it to come through you, to permeate you, to inspire you, to expand you. You shine. You organically, naturally shine. Then we have the 17, right? Follow, be led. It's about development. So as to flower, decay, remedy what's spoiled. So as to uh, remedy, pardon me, so as to remedy. Then we have the 22s, right? Double 22s. 22 is grace. 22 is grace. Its hidden influence is what? Liberation, hexagram 40, the how. It's about liberation. So it's talking about liberation, to liberate, so as to untangle. Untangle from all the thoughts, the, the, the stories we've been telling ourselves, and the, the shoulda, woulda, and couldas, and the masks, and the... You know, the identities and labels and blah, blah, blah. See, splitting apart, untangle us from all of this. Because it's not, it's not in the new order. It doesn't exist that way. In the new order of things, the application of natural order, the amplification of natural order, everything's harmonized. Everything's already in balance. Everything knows those, they, they don't even come into the picture. You know not to do it because it's an amplification of natural order. And I'm going to come to natural order in a second here. So in 22, hexagram 22, grace, we have liberation, so as to untangle. And then we have its underlining cause is 47, hexagram 47, which is about oppression, 
slash exhaustion. And then the outcome is to adapt. We are literally, it, we've gone through so much in the last six years, seven years. This oppression, this exhaustion. One can say this oppression and exhaustion of 2,000 plus years. It's not to say that they haven't been, that they, we haven't had times in our lives that are remarkable and joy-filled and joyful, yes. However, we're also, as we discussed last week, you know, this Pluto return for the U.S., the Pluto showing us the underbelly, showing us what we haven't gotten right. And America, again, for the world stage, America is the ideal of this liberation, this freedom, liberty, justice. And Pluto's there going, here's where you missed the mark. Here's the sediment. Here's what needs to, the, the decay. Here's what needs to be remedied, repairing what's spoiled. So as to untangle, to liberate, to adapt to the new, to a new. And finally, this last piece, 44. And we talked about hexagram 44 back on April 13th, because I knew, I was like, ah, we've talked about this, this coming. Because what it, hexagram 44 is coming to meet coming to meet, and at the time, coming to meet our maker, coming to meet, and, it, and its action is encounter. So we have this encounter. What's the encounter? Rainbow blessings, a river runs through it. The deliverance of divine blessings through the water of life, the, the Holy Spirit, baptism by fire, Pentecost. That's and the who? The master weaver. It's coming forth from the master weaver. And the why is the amplification of the natural order. To amplify the natural order. Not, you know, it's really, I, so coming into this, Moses, Ten Commandments. And at that point, after the Ten Commandments, scribed on the two tablets, God, source, higher, higher being, said, made one simple statement. Make no law that I have not given you. So, ten fingers, ten toes, ten commandments. And make no law I have not given you. Look at how, <laughs> you want to talk about untangle? Law after law after man-made, law after law after law after law after law. Why? Because we couldn't follow the ten that were given. There's a lot to be repaired, yeah? <laughs> There's a lot of untangling to be done. Because again, when you really kind of go back to the, the initial you know, the, uh, I believe the first one is love thy neighbor as thyself and thy God above all other. That is natural order. That is the purity and the simplicity of natural order. Because when we do that, we're not obstructing any, we're not obstructing others. We care for them like ourselves, like the two boys playing baseball. There was something greater, there was something of greater importance. And that was the care of the other. It wasn't about winning. It wasn't about leaving them behind wounded. It wasn't about accolades. Hey, I nailed a guy and, and ran a homer. It wasn't about that. It was about the natural order of things, the care of. And this, so this is where it is. So, and so 44, hexagram 44, coming to meet this encounter. Its action, uh, the, the action is the encounter, pardon me. And then the underlying, the hidden influence is the creative force. It's the hexagram one, creative force, master weaver. 
You can't make this stuff up if you tried. It's fascinating. <laughs> um, and it's underlining cause, initiate. So it is both to initiate, but it's also the word initiate. So to, to receive, to be initiated into something, to receive, to be a part of. It's, and then we have um, hexagram 24 contained within the 44. This encounter, 24, is return. And then it's to go back. So remember, they've been saying for, I mean, for years they have been giving me, from the very beginning of this, they have been giving me the message. And this is running like seven years now. We're going back to where we began, but an octave higher. The why of this is the amplification of natural order to return. Now, and I was looking at this and I go, oh, 24, return. Go back. And I was like, oh, yeah, go back to where we began, but an octave higher. And all of a sudden, the word octave, it clicked. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Octave. An octave is eight keys. Eight. Double eights. An octave. And they are talking, so I want to go here to the meaning of an octave. And it talks about, if I can get it to come up and come down. Uh, never once. There we go. So octave in music, an interval whose higher note has a sound wave frequency of vibration twice that of its lower note. Twice that of its lower note. Double 22s, 44. Double 8s, 88. Twice 44 and 44, 88. So we're going back to where we began, but an octave higher. The octave, an interval whose higher note has a sound wave frequency or a vibration twice that of its lower note. We're going up. And lastly, then I came back and I was like, okay, what? Let's look at this natural order. And, they, and it says, in philosophy, the natural order is the moral, the moral source from which natural law seeks to derive its authority. Natural order encompasses the natural relations of beings to one another in the absence of law which natural law attempts to reinforce. It's the natural order encompasses the natural relations, the natural interactions of beings to one another in the absence of law. And it talks about, there's a, there's a piece in the, in, in the Bible, there's a verse. I, I'm not proficient in the Bible. What I receive, what I share with you all is what I'm given and that I Google and I look it up. So, but it actually talks about, you know, the Old Testament was about the law. And the New Testament is about the covenant, the, the agreement. And it's about, in essence, and, and here's, again, the, Moses, the, the, uh, the Ten Commandments, the natural order, the natural law, the natural order of things. Here it is, very simple. Make no, other, make no law I've not given you. God, source, spirit, higher, higher being, was giving us the natural order, the natural law of things. We're returning to it an octave higher. It's going to amp. It's an amplification of that natural order. So it's literally like so to, to simplify this to bring it a land it, land it, dear James. It's literally saying to us. We're going to go back to a more, we're going to go back, return, go back. This coming to meet, this encounter with the divine, these rainbow blessings, this a river runs through it, the Holy Spirit, the deliverance of this via the Holy Spirit, baptism by fire, of a higher octave of 
ourselves of being, the natural relations of beings to one another, how we interact with each other, with ourselves, with our planet, the whole shebang. Because in the natural, contained within the natural order of things, I am, you, you just are. You wouldn't think to do something, you're not fallen. It's renewed, it's restored, it's amplified, it's raised up. And so this is, you know, this is the power of the of the numbers, of the message of what's taking place. And we can see it when we when we look back and we look at the different things. It makes perfect sense. When you think pre-fall, everything was in a state of harmony, bliss, oneness with each other, animal, planet, beings, humans. The creation of all, all of the creation was in a sense of harmony, balance, natural order. It knew the light, you know, you, you can see these things, right? Remember when uh, it was like, you know, the you could walk with the lion. You look at the strength card in the tarot. It's the woman walking with the lion and she's actually holding his mouth open. You know, like there's no, there's no disconnect because the natural relation of beings to one another is known, it's perfected, it's harmonic. That's what we're talking about here. And so, and again, I'm, I'm very aware, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very astute in the sense that, yes, we can see, quote unquote, the other world, meaning the chaos, the, the demonization, the oppression, the trying to go backwards, the trying to hold things the way they were. Because, you know, again, what, is, what, are, what they call this, what we're talking about, what they call this, where everybody is the natural order, the respect of people, the, the compassion, the empathy, the humanity, the, the current word is that's being woke. You're being woke because you're not being the sediment of the ideal the perfection. So two different, we can see two different ways. The way the arc is moving, you know, destiny, it's a six year destiny, conflict and destiny. So however, out of that, what comes out, what comes through that is the, is the, they're saying to me is the hourglass that that time period that epic epoch this measuring of time in the hourglass that is over Boop. you flip it on its head right you don't lay it down you don't you can't shake it anymore there's no there's no more sand to come out there's no more time left so you're either the sediment <laughs> that's at the bottom or that gets flipped on its head. It's a whole new, whole new time period, a whole new way. And you're the art, you're, you're working with the arc of destiny. You're in the new. You're in that filled chalice of the new. And that will then arc forward. It will move humanity and the whole of the whole forward. So that is um that is what's going on. It is, it is, I was really blown away. I hope I've done it justice um, today. There's a lot here. Um, uh, and one last thing, I just, in the, in the, um, in hexagram 40, and, and hexagram 40 is going to be next week. They've already told me the deliverance. They're like, hexagram 40, deliverance, next week. So, this is about hexagram 17, the how we lead, how we move through things, how we connect to it, how we release, the importance of why, um, why we are, are doing, you know, why we are moving this way. This amplification of natural order, this going back, this return, this encounter, this coming to meet, this unifying. 
in hexagram 40, to leave you with this, is hexagram 63. It's, it's hidden influences after completion, meaning we've completed the cycle. We've completed this, um, this portion of the experiment, is the way they're saying it to me. We've completed this. And what is what comes with after completion is renewal. And the underlining cause is 37, which is family, support. And so we can look both to our, our individual families, you know, our, our familial families, our friendship families, the families that we make with our friends and colleagues and so forth. Yes, that will be an, a direct experience. This is also about realizing the hidden, the underlining cause, family, support, the family, the reciprocity that we are one with, spirit, source, symphony, this bevy of discarnate beings, those that are unseen, that we're interacting with all the time. And it's just to the level of, do we see them or not? Well. Here's the, here's the completion, right? After completion is renewal. And here comes the family, spirit family, the unseen. Because we're, it, it's going to be, again, amplified. That's the word. It's going to be amplified. So for all of those that already have those abilities, you know, interact, can feel it, empath, empathy, not empathy, sorry, an empath. <laughs> empathy is good. Empath, these this family of support is going to be ever more present because again why it's the natural order remember back in the day way back in the day they were all amongst when you go back to all the ancient societies sumeria babylonia egypt um rome all but way back all the literature, all the, the historical literature speaks to the fact that, quote unquote, the gods lived amongst the people. Okay. Go forward. The second coming, the promise of the second coming is that spirit source, God source will live amongst the people. We're going back to where we began, but an octave higher. An amplification of natural order. So exciting. I'm like, whoa, I can't wait. <laughs> so with all of you, thank you so very much for joining today, for listening, for sharing all of that. Again, I hope I have done it justice um, and that I have conveyed it in an articulate manner um, because it is important and it's, it's so very important for, for the new, for the way that we will transition um, into the new and how we can literally invoke it in our lives right now, this very minute. Because again, remember Wallace D. Waddles, small acts in great ways. We don't need to wait for it to occur. We don't need to wait for this to arrive. You know, it's like rise up and meet it. Be, be on board or be at the party already. Be, you've got the golden ticket. You're, you're already on the train. Be that in this moment. So as, you know, so as to, um, it's like they're, what they're saying to me is, so as to merge, so as to permeate and merge and come together that much more effortlessly. Because that, you know, that, um, that goo, the, the shadow stuff, the goo, the sediment, the more we're willing to just lay it down, let it go, let it fall out, be the new, it's, that, it's just that much easier. So thank you all once again. Sending you massive, massive, massive love. Can't wait to see what next week is because it is all about literally hexagram 40 deliverance. Um, and not to give too much away. However, it's also where this was about the one energy, the creative force, this 44, this coming to me, the creative force. Next week is literally a two. It is the receptive force. It is this force of the divine feminine, the divine mother. And so the receiving, the receptive force. 
So I'll leave you all with that. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rest of your week. And I will see you next week. Thank you for joining. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting dearjames.com.